Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name is Matt, and this beauty on four wheels is my 99 Jeep Cherokee, aka my beater with a heater. And the last episode, we yanked out this four liter inline six cylinder factory engine that was making all sorts of racket. Uh, after a lot of requests and something I was already planning on doing, we're going to do an autopsy on this engine. But first, we're going to get this replacement engine that I found on Marketplace that supposedly has 10,000 miles, give or take, on it. We're going to funnel that thing in here and without too much work, hopefully be able to get it running and driving and get this thing out of here. Also, guys, real quick, I just want to mention that this episode is sponsored by Yankum Ropes, fantastic American-made recovery ropes. I'm not going to sit here and tell you anything more about them. If you want to find out, the link's in the description. Save you 5% and help the channel at the same time. Appreciate it. So if you haven't seen the last episode of this Jeep, well, the link is down in the description to that video. But anyway, here's the engine that we pulled out of here. And in the last video, I discussed there's a few key differences on this factory engine versus the replacement that we're going to have to do a little part swapping to make it work. Uh, this one has coil packs for the ignition system and a cam position sensor down here. Our factory engine still has an old school distributor system on it. So we're going to have to swap that over. Uh, because I'm sure the computer and the wiring and stuff would not work to run the coil packs. And secondly, our intake and exhaust manifolds are different on the original engine versus the replacement I picked up. Uh, but the blocks are all the same, so it shouldn't be an issue. I've got a new gasket. We'll go ahead and pull the old ones off and fit them to the new engine. Uh, first, we're going to have to weld up cracked cracked exhaust manifold, which I'm... After looking around online, it seems that just about every one you come across is cracked in some place. So, not going to be too worried about that, but we will weld it before we put it back in there. First thing I want to do before we can uh, set this engine down and get it off the hoist would be I want to pull the intake and exhaust manifold. But to do that, you have to pull off the power steering pump. And to pull off the power steering pump, you need to pull off the serpentine belt. So, it's a long chain of events. Let's get going. There we go. Look at that. Well, it's not too bad. We'll keep it for a spare. Boy, it's nice when the engineers actually think about you. Another embarrassing moment. Looky there. Comes right off and you take all the bolts out. Ah, it dumps the power steering fluid up the sleeve. With power steering pump out of the way, we can go ahead and start getting to our bolts for our intake and exhaust manifolds. There's one. Okay, and with that last bolt, I think our intake should be loose here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you guys see how much oil is laying in that intake? Now, I still don't know what's wrong with this motor, but that's all I'm going to show you. If I see what's more is wrong with it, we're going to save that for the autopsy video. Okay, with the intake off, we've got one more bolt, and that'll let our exhaust manifold drop right down. Oh, scratch that. we got two more. Too bad. All 
All right, I got the replacement engine pulled up on the hoist here, and I'm just looking and seeing some odd things like 12 washers here underneath that nut that's barely holding on, so that's interesting. I, I don't know what the purpose of that would be unless they stripped out the stud there. I don't know. We can pull a stud off of the old engine if we need to. The injectors have this foil stuff wrapped around them for whatever reason. Uh, the guy yanked this thing out of the vehicle like it was a race or something. He cut off every single thing that uh, he, he could <laughs> and just yanked her up out of there. So we've got a bunch of junk stuff we got to strip off of here. And yeah. Now luckily, I did notice... Uh, the O2 sensor that's on the manifold here, and not on the manifold, excuse me, on the exhaust pipe. On this one, the wires are all roached out on it and everything, and it looks pretty rough, so I'm certain that it's probably no good. And I was looking around, I'm going to go grab a new one, and then I remembered there's two of them right here. So, lucky for us, we got two donor, donor O2 sensors. I don't know if these are the same. I see one's got a longer harness than the other one, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of researching on that. Hopefully they are. I'd imagine they are because they're doing the exact same thing. They're just ones on one bank, ones on the other. And the older style was just one down from the manifold. So they should all be the same. Okay, so we got just about everything that we don't need stripped down off of this engine and I'm getting ready to pull this cam position sensor out of the replacement engine. So to install the new distributor, well the new used distributor, we need to have the engine on top dead center, top dead center on the number one cylinder, which is this guy here. To do that, uh, it's pretty easy with the configuration we have going on here. We don't have the manifolds on. And I can see right down in the spark plug hole. So the piston's up at the top. I can come around here and look. And both our intake and our exhaust valve are shut tight. And our timing mark down here lines up. Our timing mark is on zero. So we know for sure that we are at top dead center on the number one. So during that time lapse, I also pulled out all the spark plugs and examined them to uh, check the running condition of this engine when it was pulled. And the plugs all look really good. This guy came out at number one. That looks just about perfect. Not too rich, not too lean. Uh, now, this engine was set up with the split exhaust manifolds, which meant that it had two O2 sensors. One for the front bank, one for the back bank. The front bank did look a hair better than the rear. It looked like the rear was running just a little bit rich, but not too bad at all. And I'd definitely rather run rich than lean, so we uh, don't cause any engine damage. So I'm getting ready to pull the distributor out of the original engine here. And I checked it in the same manner. I made sure it was on top dead center, cylinder number one. And that also means that our rotor here is lined up when we had the cap on. That's where the number one plug wire came in. So I put a little white mark there, and we'll be using that here in the future when we install it into the other engine. So we'll go ahead and loosen up the clamp bolt down here and this baby should just lift right up out of there. With our clamp out, we should be able to just twist and lift this baby right up out of here. Okay, now uh, I got our distributor pulled out and ready to stick it in here. Uh, these are helical gears on this, 
So when you lift this up out of here, it's going to twist. See? Now, you need to line up this slotted thing. This slides into your oil pump down in the bottom. And you have to get the gears to line up right on the cam, otherwise it'll be out of timing. Now, I don't mess with distributors all that often. Uh, it's something I've done a little bit of, but not enough to stay super confident about it. So I brush up on YouTube just like everybody else does. And uh, I just watched uh, Jeep, Jeep Solid, I think it was. Has a good little quick video on how to do this. So uh, get your confidence level up. I feel good enough to stick this in here and pretty sure it's going to run. So uh, you got to take a straight screwdriver and we'll reach down in here into the receiving slot for this guy and turn the oil pump to the 11 o'clock position. So there's the slot in the oil pump. We uh, use the screwdriver and turn that up to the 11 o'clock position and that should take our distributor. Okay, now as I said, this is a helical gear, so when we're going to slide this thing down in there, as the gear engages onto this gear, it's going to spin the rotor. So uh, that's why we have to get everything lined up, because it's kind of tricky uh, to get it all lined up and jiving at the same time. But anyway, to compensate for that rotation, we're going to turn this thing back to what would be the number four cylinder plug wire, I think, which is right about here, and line up the body with the bolt hole and hopefully it just jives right in there wiggle a little bit yeah no nope, the oil pump is still not lined up oh there we go yeah look at that perfect so our line our mark here, where the number one plug wire would be, lines up with our rotor, we're good. Feel confident about that. Now all we have to do is stick our bolt and the keeper plate back on here. Uh, this rotor looks like absolute crap. It's all pitted up and worn out, dirty, so we'll get a new cap and rotor and all right, now that we have our distributor in there, I think I'm going to put it back in. Uh, I debated on putting the exhaust manifold and the intake back on since that's the way I pulled the old one out. However, I think it's going to be a lot easier. It's kind of tight in there. I think it's going to be a lot easier to get this thing aligned and bolted up without that in the way. And I don't think it's going to be too bad to put that stuff on in the engine bay. So we'll go ahead and uh, start easing her in there. Guess I should move this tray of bolts before I send it flying. I don't need this power steering pump in the way either. Or this one. buddy well yeah, I guess it wasn't as big a ordeal to put back in as it was to take out uh, without the intake and exhaust manifold on there I was able to get the top two bell housing bolts started relatively easy uh, so I got four of the main bell housing bolts in there now so we can go ahead and get this thing adjusted put in the motor mounts uh, I got to bolt the brackets back on the block I took those off in a fit of rage uh, to get a little bit more clearance so yeah I don't remember if I showed it in the previous video but these mounts uh, were pretty well shot so I picked up some new ones I got these guys from Napa they weren't too awful bad I think like 20 some dollars a piece but they just go like so okay Finally got the motor mount bolts in. Get this engine crane out of my way.
Now we should be able to really start ripping and tearing and putting this thing back together, getting all the wires, hoses, bolts, nuts, everything all hooked back up. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to take this thing for a spin. We're gonna go ahead and get this crack fixed up on the manifold here. I drilled a hole at the end of the crack. That should stop it from spreading. I don't know. Everybody says that these manifolds always have cracks all through them and there's pretty much nothing you can do to fix them, but we're gonna do the best we can with what we got without buying new. Oh, that's way too hot for this. Take two with less melting stuff. Seems better, but I think we're out of shielding gas. It's just a short little weld, we'll just make her do. Oh yeah, that looks like uh, rabbit pellets. Uh -huh. All right, well, not too bad for not having any gas left. Like an idiot, apparently I left the valve on last time I used the welder, so what are you going to do? Okay, I don't remember what all I have and haven't shown you up to this point, but I got the motor in here, the bell housing is all buttoned up on it, uh, I got to put the starter in yet, uh, all that stuff underneath the car, it's, it's so tight down there that I can barely see to do it myself, let alone try to squeeze you guys in there with me, so I'm doing enough cursing without a camera, so I'm just putting that out, but I put the motor in the first time, and it went together. I got the bolts in the bell housing, and then I went to rotate the motor to line up the uh, torque converter bolts, and the engine wouldn't spin. It was locked up against the transmission somehow. So I had to loosen all the bolts back up in the transmission, and I already had it sitting up on the motor mount, so I had to drop it back down to get to the top two. And then as I was loosening it, uh, the engine became free and spun, and when I was spinning it over, it felt like something just clicked and went together right and I was able to crank the bolts back down on the transmission it still spun over good so I bolted up the torque converter we should be good uh, the next thing I'm going to start doing I'm going to put the starter in like I said I'm going to throw on our intake and exhaust manifold and we should just be down to hoses and wires power steering pump yeah nuts and bolts from here it's easy time lapse time <laughs>
Oh, here we are. I just ended up buying a completely uh, brand new pump. That's a Gates pump. It was only 45 bucks. I was going to pull the other one off the uh, original motor because I know it was good, but <gasps> yeah, just for $45, it's peace of mind and good assurance. Uh, these four liters are known for having a little bit of heating issues anyway, so probably best to just go ahead and do it right. Especially because it's easy right now. I got the whole front clip off, so it's super easy to change this. We'll finagle her in there and get the bolts on. Torque specs 20 foot pounds. We're going to use our calibrated impact. Perfect. All right, now let's put the front clip back on for the second time. Well, I think this is about it. Uh, we obviously have some more stuff to put back in. I got an air box, the front grill and all that stuff, the hood. Uh, but it's a good time to go ahead and see if this thing's gonna fire up for us. That way we don't waste up too much time putting everything else on if we have a failure. So, uh, fingers crossed. I'm hoping this grill fires right up. I just got done putting the battery in and uh, nothing's on fire yet. So <laughs> I think we're on the right track. There goes nothing. Uh. We have a click. We have a click. Why do we have a click? All right, well, hopefully I just took care of it. The, uh, hot going down to the starter wasn't tight I just threaded the nut on there and left it so I tighten it up hopefully we should have more than a click Check engine lights on. 
Look at that, huh? <laughs> Every once in a while, a blind squirrel gets a nut too. Okay, it's been running for, I don't know, five, ten minutes. The uh, radiator, or the uh, thermostats opened up. I finished topping off all our antifreeze. We got a little bit of heat coming out here. We're running a little hot, so we might have a bubble in the system. I'm gonna play around trying to burp it a bit, but... I think it sounds a little bit better with this motor, huh? <laughs> I'm happy with it so far. We'll see what it does when I get it on the ground and completely back together. I think that just about does it. Uh, I still got this thing sitting on jack stands. We're gonna go ahead and drop it down and get this thing out in the uh, Swinter's Wonderland outside. Well, it's definitely not done done. There's a lot of little details inside I want to fix yet. I'm going to patch that hole in the fender I stuck my hand through in the first video. Uh, sounds like I have a little exhaust leak. That's not a huge deal. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to do to it too, because you can see we are in the rust belt. There's, you know, 60 tons of salt laying on the road right there. And that's what eats these vehicles up. I got a five gallon pail of fluid film and I'm gonna go ahead and stand this thing up on its nose or however I can pick it up easiest and uh, coat the whole underside so that we don't lose it in a year. <laughs> Maybe this thing will last a little while since it's not too bad right now. Uh, all right, well, let's take this thing for a little spin.
sitting at 210, so we probably still have an air bubble in there. I'm gonna have to try and wheeze a lot of it. Uh, tranny shifting nice though. A little bit of thunking and bumping. Probably need some sway bar links replaced, or sway bar link bushings anyway. I think I showed those in one of the videos. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. A lot of little rattles and shakes and loose stuff we'll have to tighten up. But uh, it passes the donut test, though. Oh, yeah. Real quickly, we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, breakdown of cost on this project. So we had our initial $200, of course I need a better marker. We had our initial $200 purchase price. Then we had a $300 engine. And then we had uh, tax and title transfer fees came out to $233. Welcome to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They really whack you on that stuff. We had about 150 so far in parts to fix this thing up. So if my calculator is correct, that brings our total investment up to $883, which is not too bad for our beater with a heater. All right, well, as I mentioned before, this thing is still far from perfect. A lot of little odds and ends and little uh, noises that we need to take care of. Uh, definitely gonna need some more attention, but we're gonna tackle that in future videos. But for right now, $883 for this vehicle, I'm happy with that. Let me know down in the comments if you think that that's a reasonable price or what you think this thing's worth in this condition, uh, or if you think I'm just crazy for wanting to even put a dime into something this old. I'm thinking in the future, i got half a mind to throw some bigger tires at this thing and uh, make it ready for just a little bit of light off-road. And I don't want to get carried away. Maybe build a bumper or two for it and a uh, spare tire rack because the way the Cherokees are, it's got the spare tire mounted up on the inside, which really uh, limits your cargo room. So I think that's it for this video, guys. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to click the old subscribe button so you don't miss any future adventures with this gem. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.